Hey, what's up YouTube? Hurricane Codex here. Uh, I've been meaning to get to the starter deck opening for a little while now. Uh, the release was about two weeks ago. Uh, but I've been a little busy and uh, I've been working on other content. Uh, but I was saving these to open on camera. Just to kind of show uh, what, what the contents are, how the boxes are. So if you're on the fence about purchasing them, I can kind of show you uh, what you get. And then you can kind of make a decision from there if that helps. Uh, but I do have uh, one of each ready to be opened, uh, so just some early comments. Uh, I love the design of the packaging. It looks sort of like a like a manga side, uh, so I really like the style that they're going for and uh, the way that the uniform uh, is just really cool, seeing them all together like this. Uh, so let's start out with number one, with the red starter deck, which is the Luffy starter deck. Uh, so again, very cool designs. Uh, it has the um, like manga panels in the back, which is pretty cool, uh, showcasing the straw hats. Um, again, the side has kind of like the, like the manga kind of look, like a volume, and the back has the contents here, uh, so you can see what it comes with. Uh, so pretty standard. Uh, it's a full deck, so you can uh, open it up and it's ready to play right outside the box. So it has everything you need. It has uh, 50 main cards in the deck, and that has one leader, and it has 10 Don cards, and it also comes with a play sheet. Uh, so let's take a look here. Let's crack this open. All right, so it's just uh, tape on the sides. tab here. Alright, so these boxes are bigger than the super pre-release ones. If you've seen those before, they're very tiny. Uh, these are a little larger. Um, so there's this little cardboard box here that kind of holds everything in place. Uh, it's mostly uh, empty. It's uh, pretty hollow. But yeah, it's just to kind of hold the cards there. And it comes with the instructions. It's just a sheet, pretty straightforward. So there's, there's a, a quick, quick reference guide. It's easy to kind of go through, and it gives you a breakdown of how the game works. And then on the back is the standard uh, field setup. So if you're not really sure where everything goes. Uh, this gives you a good place to kind of to learn the setup. All right, and the deck itself is held together by this plastic sleeve. You just slide that right off. Okay, so we have the Dawn cards. Okay, and the Luffy leader. Yeah, I prefer the art on the, the regular decks with the manga art. That's um, I think it's a lot cooler than the, the super pre-release ones, even though they have the cool stamp. Uh, the manga art is definitely cooler. Uh, yeah, but very nice foiling. Uh, red back. Pretty standard. And... For reference, here was the list. Uh, we get two copies of Luffy. You get two copies of the Zoro. Uh, the Luffy's do get played in a lot of um, the red, the red standard decks right now. So um, it only comes with two copies. So if you do want two more, uh, you could buy them individually. But I think they're they're going for probably enough where it's enough to justify buying a whole other starter deck because you get the rest of the cards with it, so you might as well just buy two starter decks to get a full set, as opposed to going with singles. I know the Jet Pistols in particular are going for about $5 right now, so that alone uh, justifies buying a whole other deck. All right, then the Zoros. So those are the Secret Rares, you get two of each. Um, then we have uh, four Usops, which are commons, four Karus, uh, which are commons, and then you get four Sanjis, which are also commons. Then we have four Jinbei, 
And then we have four choppers. So choppers are a staple. Um, they're used on a lot of the red decks. This is your cheap blocker for red. Uh, so you have a full play set of that. And then we have a full play set of the common Nami's. Uh, so these are also useful and they do get used in some decks. So you have a full play set to go. Um, then we have four copies of the Robin. Um, this one's not as useful, it's just a plain vanilla. And four copies of Common BB. Uh, this does get used in some Zero decks, even though it's a vanilla uh, with a base power of 4,000 for two. It's a, it's a efficient body for that. And with the Zoro's ability, you can give it the plus 1,000. There's a Don Touch Shield Eater, so that one does get played. And now we have four comments of the Frankies. And this comes with two copies of uh, Common Brook, which is a 2k counter. So you also want four of these. Uh, these will also get played in some of the red decks. Uh, having a 2k counter always makes the card useful. Uh, this one also has the ability to um, give up to two Rest of Dawn cards to your leader or one of your characters. So the, uh, the effect's also pretty useful if you want to play it. And then you also get two copies of Guard Point, um, which does get used in some decks as well. That's an option. It, for only one cost, you get plus 3,000 power, which is a little bit higher than um, most of the one cost um, event cards for counters. It also has a trigger ability as well to give um, your leader one of your characters plus 1,000 uh, power during the turn. So that can also be relevant as well. And then Jet Pistol is definitely a staple for um, every red deck right now. You want four copies of this. Uh, this is going to be one of your key cards, so you definitely want those red. And that helps you get around a lot of threats. So with that and the Otama from set one, uh, it's a deadly combo that will get rid of a lot of big threats. In uh, Dabu John Bay, uh, this is using some decks as well. You're probably okay with uh, two copies. You probably don't need to run more than that in most decks. At least right now, but this only comes with two copies of it. And then we have uh, two copies of the Thousand Sunny, which is a stage card. Uh, it isn't really getting played in red. It's not really too great. Um, but if you want a, a full set of that, you need a second deck. So uh, a lot of the cards you get two of in here. So getting a second deck would be worth it. Okay, now let's move on to the second deck, the worst generation. Uh, this is my personal favorite. Uh, green is the deck I've been most excited for, particularly a green kid. Uh, ever since I saw this leader, this is the one I wanted to play. Uh, so I did get two copies of the Super Pre-Release deck, so I've been using that recently, but uh, I wanted to have the regular versions as well. So I did pick this one up, and uh, like I was saying, I like the, uh, the art better on the the regular versions of the starter decks. So I should probably switch over to this leader. Okay, and again here is the, the set list. Uh, this one also comes with the manual. This is gonna be the standard for all of them. Uh, same deal. So this excess cardboard, I just meant to make the box look cooler by making it a little bit bigger to make it look like it's a, a manga volume. Let's see if we can get this uh, plastic off. Okay, so we have our Dawn cards. We have a lot of those. Okay, and we have the Kid Leader. Again, uh, the art on this one is super cool. I like the, the manga art better. Um, and yeah, nice foiling. So very nice. We have two copies of Law. Uh, this is using some decks, so um, useful to have a full playset. Uh, two copies of the seven cost blocker kid, uh, also using a lot of kid decks. This is uh, one you probably want a playset of. Uh, some decks might run uh, anywhere between zero to four, so it's really a personal preference. So if you don't have the full playset, you can usually work with the the two. 
Uh, okay, now we have the commons. So we have four copies of Vito. Two copies of Rouge. Uh, not too big a fan of that card. Uh, we have four copies of the Capone. Uh, the Capone is a staple in a lot of green decks. Uh, so if you're playing Law or Kid, you'll probably be uh, using this. And then we have two copies of Killer. Um, this one you can usually get by with two. Uh, but if you want a full place, again, you need the second server deck. Uh, this card, I haven't been really playing it um, for a while. At first, I was thinking that um, yeah, I'd be playing this in a lot of the decks, but I've been kind of leaning away from it. I'm um, opting more for the five cost Drake uh, for my removal for um, for a higher cost. You'll see a bigger body out of it. And then we have four copies of Kobe, just a vanilla. Uh, one of the best cards in the game. This is a staple for green. Jewelry Bonnie. So we have four copies of that. That's going to be a searcher for your supernovas. Then we have um, four copies of Scratchman of Pooh. So this one comes with four copies of your 2k card. So that's really useful. Uh, you definitely want four of these. And these are played pretty much um, as a four of in most green decks. And then we have two copies of Hawkins. Uh, this is one that is also... A really strong card that gets played a lot of green green decks. Um, my number has been switching a little bit on this one. Uh, I've been sticking with three for right now. I think that's been working well. And it starts well for Bonnie, so uh, it's usually not too hard to find the card when you need it. Uh, then we also have four copies of Heat. Uh, I don't think I've ever played this card. Uh, even in the Super Pre release, so <laughs> um, yeah, not really useful. And Beppo, same thing, never used that before either. Uh, but we have four copies of playing Beppo. Uh, Drake, we have four copies of the Drake. Uh, this is one that is uh, one of the key players in the Super Pre release uh, in the Declamate Battles, but then um, after that, I've, I've really found a favor with it. Um, I haven't really found it as useful as I thought it would be. Um, and you usually will opt for other things. It's kind of like an awkward cost for four. A lot of the green will be playing on odd, odd numbers or uh, cheaper numbers. And then we have two copies of Scalpel, which is um, outside of the, um, the Star Deck meta. Uh, you never have to play this card. This one is essentially uh, an extra Dawn. You have to keep open in order to basically do a 2k counter when you can literally play any other 2k counter in its place. And then four copies of Repel uh, in green. You're going to be playing the Punk Gibsons. Uh, this one isn't really as useful in comparison to Punk Gibson. If you want to play your uh, two cost event card um, for, uh, for a counter, then I would go with Punk Gibson over these. And then two copies of Straw Sword. Which is also one that uh, I wasn't a fan of at first, but then um, Max from the Moonmen actually uh, convinced me to start playing these. I've been running it as a two of, and I've been really liking it. It comes in handy. If you can tap down uh, pretty much anything, if you want to tap down a big blocker, or if you want to tap down um, a threat that's a big attacker, you can do this and swing in on it. So uh, your opponent always has to um, be on the lookout for this. So I can kind of catch them off guard. So um, Straw Sword is very useful, but only comes with two in here. Uh, again, I think two is probably a good number anyway. Uh, but for the full place that you would need a second deck. And then uh, just a note here, they actually swap the ratios of Repel and Scalpel on the back of the box. Uh, so it's actually two Scalpel, four Repel. Uh, not a big deal, uh, but just uh, wanted to note it here. On to deck number three, Seven Warlords of the Sea. This is the Crocodile deck. Uh, Crocodile was one I played in the deck limit battles, and I think it was a strong deck, and a lot of the, the winners were using this one. Uh, it was either this or Kaido that was really winning those. So when you take two of these starter decks, that's when um, this one became a lot more powerful. But I know in um, the Super Pre release format, with only one of them, a lot of people won't really have a lot of luck with it, so. Uh, usually like purple or green, we're winning those.
All right, and just like the others, we have the rule book and this cardboard. And let's get the list up over here as well. Okay, we have the Don. Uh, the Crocodile Leader. I love the R on this one. Crocodile is also one of my favorite characters. Um, so, uh, uh, with um, with Blue, Doflamingo is really the leader right now to go with. Blue is kind of not in the best spot compared to the other colors. Um, but the Doflamingo deck is um, it's a lot of fun. And um, there's a lot of synergy with it. But the Crocodile has merit as well. But I would say uh, I definitely lean more towards Doflamingo if you want to play Blue. Um, but yeah. Very, uh, very nice art. Okay, and we have two copies of the uh, super rare crocodile. Uh, two copies of the seven drop doflamingo. This one's also still useful. Uh, this is one of those key cards from the deck limit battles, but it's still useful in um, in the OPO one meta. Um, so this is one that you want to have a few of. Uh, Weevil was also good in the deck limit battle format, but not so much in the Romance Dawn meta. But we have uh, four copies of that for commons. Uh, we have two copies of the Gecko Moria. This is one that you'll probably want four of. Uh, two copies of the Mihawk. This is the 2k counter for the deck, but only um, two copies of it. That's one you want four of as well. And then we have four copies of Jinbei. We have two copies of Sentimaru. Uh, again, this is where having two of these comes in handy. Um, so you can have a full playset. This is one that is still played, uh, not as much as it was in the deck in battle. It was basically in every deck that was blue. Um, but yeah, going forward, it, it's still something that people do play, but you don't see it as often. We have four copies of the uh, one-drop blocker. Again, standard, you want to have your one-cost blocker. One full place of those that we played in pretty much every deck. We have four copies of the Kuma. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Buggy is not very good, but we have four copies of the Buggy. All right, and we have four copies of the Pacifista, just a vanilla, but uh, this is a really cost efficient card. Uh, this is still being used in the Roman Sound meta. Uh, they do synergize very well with the Sentimaru, but not necessary to be played because they also synergize with Bartholomew, uh, Bartholomew Kuma from the Romance Dawn set. And then four copies of the blocker, Bo Hancock. Not very efficient for the cost, but it does have a trigger. Uh, two copies of the Teach. Probably want uh, a playset, but you can probably get away with two. And we have four copies of the Sables. Uh, again, one of those key cards from the deck on my battles. Don't see it as often anymore. And then we have four copies of the Thrust Pad Cannon. Not super useful. And two copies of Level of Mellow. Uh, this is one that you also want to play set. It's one of the best blue counters in the game. So you definitely want to get two more of these if you only cut the starter deck. And lastly, we have Purple Kaido, the Animal Kingdom Pirates. And here is the set list. Unfortunately, purple's the color I played the least. I know it's a strong color, it's just, it just hasn't really been too interesting to me. Um, I really do want to play it now that I'm opening the starter decks. Um, I do want to give it a try, and it's one I should definitely, it's one I should definitely know how to play. Yeah, I just haven't really felt like trying it, though. I've been gravitating more towards the other decks first. But purple is one of the best colors in the game, and this is one of the best leaders. Um, and there's a lot of options that it has. Um, so I do recommend playing purple if, uh, if you're interested in it. It's a very strong color. Okay, rule book. Done. Let's get the uh, set list back over here. 
Hmm. That's where they put the uh, plastic the other way this time. The other ones are uh, all horizontal. And it's even uh, a different size. Yeah, that's weird. Okay, so we have the Don. All standards so far. Okay, and we have the Kaido leader. Uh, again, this, this art is awesome. Uh, he's super big, so he, he barely fits in the card. Um, just kind of shows how uh, imposing he is. Uh, but yeah, loving the, uh, the leader art. And we have two of the nine cost Kaidos um, for the super rare. Um, these are also ones that you can probably get away with two. Uh, you might want to play three, depends on your preference, uh, but usually two or three is the preferred number. Uh, but these are very scary cards, and you definitely want to be uh, using them if you um, if you have them. And then we have two copies of King, one of the staples for Kaido. This one's played at three or four copies most of the time, so if you uh, need more, you'll likely have to buy another deck. We have four copies of the 2K Counter Ulti here. So this is one that is still played. Uh, again, the 2K Counter is always useful, so... That's good that you get four of those. Uh, then we also have two copies of Queen. Queen is one of the uh, the best blockers in the game. It also gives you um, card draw, so you can cycle through the top two cards of your deck and discard one card. So um, you'll get two copies, but you probably want four. Then we have four copies of the Sasaki. Uh, four copies of Sheep's Head. Uh, two copies of Jack. Uh, this one does get played, so if you want a play set of that, keep in mind you only get two. Then we have Gin Rummy, the uh, one cost vanilla, not very useful here. Then we do get two copies of Who's Who. Uh, a lot of decks probably only run two copies, so you're probably fine with just those two. And then we have four copies of Black Maria, one of the staple blockers. Uh, you don't have a one cost blocker for purple. But you do have this one, then you also have, then you also have a Kurizumi in the Romance Dawn set as well. And then we have four copies of the Vanilla Page one, and four copies of the Vanilla Drake. Uh, this art's pretty cool though. It's a uh, full full um, full art for the card and uh, has some manga paneling on it, so it's pretty cool. Uh, lead Performer Disaster, you get two copies. Um, yeah, this one doesn't really get played too much anymore outside the starter decks. And, and uh, two copies of Brachio Bomber. This one is also one of those uh, good cards to have. Uh, you probably go with two, uh, some will run three. So that's a preference thing, but yeah, it's a, a good card that um, can help you have some removal and a little bit of ramp. And then one of the best counters in the game, you get four copies of Blast Breath, which is nice. Uh, this is one that you will want four of. Um, and for only one Don, it's 4,000 power. You do have to do a Don minus, but for the, for the power behind it, um, that's a pretty cheap cost. And then four copies of Onigashima. So this is also a staple for, uh, for for Kaido. You definitely want four of these. This is the key cards. You want to start out with this as soon as possible. The earlier you get Onigashima, the better chance you have of winning if you're playing Kaido. So definitely want four copies of it. Make, you can always pitch it with Queen if you um, if you have extra copies in your hand. Uh, it's also uh, noteworthy that you can play another copy of it, but that's not usually... Um, you can usually play another copy down to replace one that you have, but that's not really going to be... Uh, Don efficient most of the time, so that's not really um, the best play, but it's an option. Okay, and there you have it. These are the four starter decks. Hopefully, if you're on the fence, you weren't really sure where to start. Uh, if you're leaning towards one of the colors, hopefully this will kind of give you an indication of uh, where you might want to go. Uh, you really can't go wrong with any one of them. Um, every one of these colors is viable. And with the starter decks, if you take two of them, you can combine them. You have a competent deck, and you can usually 
um, you know, do okay. But you'll definitely want to enhance them using the cards from Romance Dawn if possible. But if you want to just get started, have something to play, uh, these are a really great way to get started. Um, out of the box, I feel like they're pretty even if you just have one copy of each. So the power levels are all uh, pretty even. So if you just want to play for fun uh, with, with a friend and introduce a game to them, this is a, a good way to begin. And um, the w way that they're designed, they're, they give you a good indication of what the game uh, looks like. So uh, overall, I really am impressed with the Star Decks. And I think this is um, the, the Star Decks feel more useful than um, a lot of other card games where they just take cards from the set and put them in and you have like a weaker version of a deck. Whereas these cards are only found in the star decks as opposed to being mixed in with the Romance Dawn set. So the only way to get these cards is to buy the star decks or buy the singles um, in the secondhand market. Uh, so this is where you want to begin. If you have, um, if, if you don't have any cards, this is uh, the best place to begin. All right, and that's going to conclude my overview of the starter decks. Hopefully you found this useful. Uh, if so, be sure to like and subscribe. Uh, also, let me know in the comment section below what your favorite starter deck is or your favorite leader and how you've been enjoying the game so far. But that's it from me. Be sure to bring along all of your hopes and dreams, and I'll see you in the next video.